Look at this. Look at this rain. Man. Hey, coming down out here. But rain, sleet, or snow. I am not gonna miss Eric Thomas and Tuskegee, Alabama. Alright, here we go. I'm out here. I'm out here. On the way to on the way to Chappie. Go here at ET. You know what I'm saying? The reason I'm out here is because I want to succeed as bad as I want to breathe. And when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then, and only then, will you be successful. I heard that from a guy named Eric something. That's right, Eric Thomas. <laughs> the hip hop player. All right. Now, this is why this day is so important. It's because eventually, see all them parking lot spots? All that right there. When I do my show here, all that's gonna be sold out. All 5,000 seats. God gave me a revelation. He said, you grew up five miles, less than five miles from an arena that holds five, that has 5,000 seats. If you charge $50 a ticket, that's 200, that's a quarter million dollars in one show. And it's less than five miles from your house. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? 5,000 seats arena, 5,000 seat arena, less than five miles from my house. Amazing. All right. You want to see your ET today? The future is going to be David Henderson. Cars as far as the eyes can see. All right. So uh, I actually went back and re recorded over this part right here to edit out the music because uh, when I walked in they had the DJ going music was playing um, they had I want to say swag surfing playing I don't need no copyright infringements messing up the video and all that stuff but um, anyway um, yeah I'm looking around like man why is it not packed this is Eric freaking Thomas come on people hey the one thing I was going to say man just watching y'all you know, have fun and I want you to know that if you make the right moves, you can continue to have that kind of fun. But if you don't take advantage of this opportunity right now, a lot of y'all will have a lot of regrets, 30, 40, 50, 60. But this is a great question. It's important. Like, you know, when you're at Michigan State, I went to my agency first, got my 40 degree, and I went to Michigan State. And I worked with, you know, undergrads. I'm telling you, about, it's a different experience. Like, it's a different experience. Like, you, this isn't welcome. Like you don't have a spot where you can do this. Like it's a predominant ninety-three percent of the school is predominantly white. You don't get this opportunity. So I love to see y'all have the fun. You know, I love to see the excitement. I'm just gonna be honest. Who you are to be, you're now becoming right now. And y'all gotta understand that. Like I can't tell you how many students call me because they're in trouble with the law. Like I, I was that dude. Like if you get in trouble, I don't care. You ain't gotta call the school. Whatever, maybe I call your mama, I'll come get you. But a lot of students, unfortunately, they didn't take advantage of the opportunity to go to Michigan State. And they ended up going back to the grid. I'm just going to be honest. Like, how many of y'all are at least juniors and seniors? At least juniors and seniors. Y'all already know going back home ain't the same. Just being real, like, when you was in the grid, when you was in middle school, high school, it was cool. After your, like, maybe after your freshman year, you were done with the grid. Like, it just ain't the same. Your sophomore year, you like, that's it. Like, I ain't never trying to go back home, right? But this is what I'm trying to tell you. If you don't do what you're supposed to do here, right, it's, you're not going to have this type of fun. That's all I want you to have. Life is too short not to have fun. But a lot of you, if you make the wrong mistake, they're not going to be as nice to you when you're 28 as when you were 18. Nobody going to treat you the same when you're 32. Like, you ain't cute no more. Like, come to being real, like, they about to be looking at you like a grown adult, right? And so, number one, I want to encourage you, though, when I was in a room upstairs, you know, I'm not, I'm not from Tuskegee, but of course, you know, going to an HBCU, like, this is one of the schools that everybody talks about. Like, this is one of the premier periods, right? Yeah. So when I was there, of course, I studied Booker T. Washington, right? That was one of my heroes. I'm literally in that room, y'all, like, looking at a picture of my man. Like, it, they got 1881 on there. Like, he real. I'm up there, like, he, like, you know when you go to a school and you see all the presidents? Like, he on it, like, he up there. I'm like, yo, my man really live. One of the little homies was like, he happens, I can take him to the grave site. 
I was like, ooh, let's go. Because, yeah, like, you know, that's, that's next level. So I got to tell y'all what it's like. So, like, if you play basketball and wait with people like the Jordan, what I do, that's how I look up to Booker T. Like, the way you might look up to the Brown, that's how I look up to Mother T. When I was a kid and I would see them with the mic in their hand, doing their thing, I never wanted no football in my house. I would never want no basketball. This was, when I would see them do that, not from X, I would be like, yo, that's what I want to do. So coming to y'all school, it's like, yo, Booker T is one of the, like, he's one of the founders, like, he's one of the blacks that were responsible for why we are where we are. And guess what he did? He worked. He worked, dog. Uh, he walked to school. He walked miles and miles. He cleaned up, not once, not twice, three times. They couldn't find no dirt nowhere. So here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that you're living at a time where you can have whatever you want. How many of y'all in the room like, yo, for real, I want seven figures, I want eight figures, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be a multi-millionaire. Being real, how many of y'all like, I want to live where I want to live? My bad, I want to live where I want to live. Who's here? How many of y'all want to look out for your, your mama? How you want to be able to put your mama on? Feel me? Now do me a favor. I, I, I promise y'all I ain't gonna be before y'all long, but I really do. Every time I talk, like whoever you love, I really want you to forget about yourself and think about that person. I really do. Right? Because one of the greatest mistakes I ever made in my life, and I can't fix it, is I dropped out of high school. I didn't get my first degree until I was 30 years old. So you understand what that means? That means that my mom had to wait for me to be 30. She had to wait 12 years after the time I was supposed to graduate. My mom deserved to hear my name call as I walked across the state. I never gave her that. I never gave my mom that. 18, I dropped out. 19, I got a GED. What am I doing? What am I doing with marching for no GED? You feel me? It wasn't no ceremony. I robbed my mother of that opportunity. Let me tell y'all something. I got that first one at 30. You gotta love your mom, bro. I'm like, being real. I grew up in the city. You got cats. It's like, you down for life. All my boys, we was down for life for, I probably got one of them that's still down for life. I went to Detroit here before. It was almost 3,000 students there. I don't know nobody. I clown, acting a fool in school, trying to make my boys laugh, trying to make my boys impress my boys. And guess who had to wait to see me graduate at 30? Mm. And when I finally graduated at 30, I was about to have my mom drove 700 and some miles. None of my homies were there. My mom drove 770 miles. Crazy part when I graduated, I was 30 years old with two kids. I had a five year old and a three year old. You know what? My mom was screaming like I graduated on time. She got lucky. Mom was like, That's my boy. I'm like, Mom, I'm 30 with a beard. Two kids. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody else, 21, 22, graduated. I'm 30 years old. So do me a huge favor before I go. Like, I'm like, Yo, I, I ain't the one. Like, I, I'm not here. I don't know. Try to tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You're wrong. Do whatever you want to do. You want to be cool. You don't want to take this serious. Whatever you want. I'm just trying to tell you. It's somebody that had you and they could have died giving birth to you. My grandma, I used to always wonder why my grandma was so cold. Come to find out when I wrote my latest book, my mom wrote the first chapter book about my family in Alabama. My grandmother's mom died while she gave birth to me. So my mother, didn't, my grandma didn't grow up with, with a mother. That's why she wasn't like nurturing like that. So before I get started, like, it don't even make sense. Like, I'm just being 1,000. Some of y'all, you got mamas that look out for you. You got daddies that look out for you. You got mamas that make sacrifice. Like, some of y'all parents in here, they ain't come up here just take 30, 40 grand. They ain't had that kind of bread. Somebody took out a loan for you. Somebody co-signed. Somebody got to work another job for you. I'm just telling you before I get started, bro, if you ain't going to do it for them, like, you trash. Being real, you trash. You up here trying to impress somebody. You ain't even gonna probably know two years from now. You ain't even be hanging out with them 20 years from now. You trash. If you up here and your mama's struggling financially, and you up here playing games, this is four years, this four and out, y'all. Five and out. The rest of your life gonna be way longer than this. This five years, this six years at, at best, it take you six. This is six. But you got a mama back in the crib that's working a job. She shouldn't be working, but she gotta work because she wanna make sure you make your dreams come out. It's only fair you cash her out. It's only fair y'all bought the crib. I, my, my mom was like, I'm out my crib, and, you know, it cost me while, like whatever. Mom, you can move next door. I bought the crib next door. When my man moved out, I bought the crib next door. Just in case my mom needed somewhere to stay. Mm. So my mom, you good, you don't owe me nothing. You don't gotta pay bills, you don't gotta do nothing. I grocery shop for you, whatever. So I just gotta make sure before I get started, some of y'all act like y'all all out of control. You up here trying to impress these people. You better take your butt to class. 
You better get that degree, that first one. You better go get that second one. You better be an entrepreneur. I don't care if you're pretty school, that's on you. But don't quit and not get what you're supposed to get. Can we show the first slide? I'm just going to walk y'all through some stuff. I'm going to get y'all out of here. I, I would do nothing for you. I'm trying to help y'all out. So, what's the church going to get time? He said there comes a time in your lifetime, a special moment. Again, like I, I just, I, I want to make sure y'all talk that. A special moment. Just he, that's a special moment. That's a special moment, y'all. You know how many people outside of this country want to get an education? Do y'all know? Because maybe y'all don't know. Because you got to be entitled to spoil. Do you not know that in other countries they don't get to go to school? Like, it ain't no school. You go to work. You go to war. You're 12 years old with a shotgun in your hand. You go to war. You, you, you don't get to go to school. You don't get to dance. You don't get to go to a football game on Sunday. Ain't no basketball. They, they, at 12, they're living a real life with, with, with shotguns trying to protect their family. Ukraine right now, Russia right now. Ain't nobody in no school. They're blowing up the whole dog on time. Everybody going to class. This is a privilege, just in case you didn't know that. And not only is it a privilege, it's one of the ways that Booker T. Watson, they understood that this is one of the ways you can get from where you are economically and get to wherever you want to be. This, this is that. Everybody ain't going to the league. The rest of us will have to do school. Does that make sense? So I'm going to read it one more time. To each, there comes in their lifetime a special moment. When there are big tap on the shoulder and offer the chance to do something special. Unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. I was just at work, y'all, Michigan State, just doing what I do. I went to an HBCU, so they brought me to Michigan State. I was doing a program so I could help black students who came to Michigan State finish at Michigan State. I did a video, it was 30 kids in the room. I was like, oh, oh. My finest hour. I didn't even, my boy was doing his schoolwork. He put the camera on, he put the mic on me. I went off, it was 30 of them. I went off, y'all acting like fools, y'all from the east side of Detroit. I'm not stupid. Now these white professors might not know where you come from, but I know where you come from. You from the east side, rats and roaches, and that's what you're going back to. You up here climbing. Your mama ain't got no one. You trying to act like you. You better get your stuff together. And all of a sudden, I just went Google story. The man put that book. I wake up years later. That story got over 100 million hits. It made me a multi million. I had my, I had my opportunities. I'm murderous. I had my opportunities. I wasn't doing no video. I was talking to a group of kids. I wasn't doing no video. I didn't know about no social media. I had a job. It was in me. And I just went in and murdered it. Your special moment might be that math class, that English class, that social studies class, whatever, that internship, whatever, basketball, football, whatever your thing is, your intern with Amazon. This is your special moment. The question is, what you gonna do with it? And this is why I love speaking. I need to go home, y'all. I don't gotta go to nobody's class. <laughs> I don't gotta wake up tomorrow and go, I did that already. I did the GED, the four year degree, the bachelor's PhD. I did that already. You gotta get up. I'm not here for me, I'm here to tell you, this is your finest moment. What you do right now will decide what your life looks like in 32, 42, 52. There's still some grown folks talking about it. I went to ski, never finished, went to the crib after the first semester, never did nothing. There's people who never graduated, they came up here and played and got sent to the crib. This is your finest hour. The question is what you gonna do with it. This is your finest hour. Everybody talk about y'all, ski, Morehouse. How? Everybody talk about y'all. I went to HBCU, but I ain't going to the one everybody. When I say how, you, most of y'all probably don't even know what it is. <laughs> right next door, Huntsville, Alabama. Everybody talk about y'all. This your finest hour. Everybody talk about Booker T. Everybody talk about y'all. This is your finest hour. The question is, what you going to do with your finest hour? And what you do is not only going to bless the generation that came before you, it's the one that's going before you. I graduated from Michigan State University. Guess what I mean? My babies ain't even got to do nothing in high school when they go. I'm just being real with you. Nepotism. I'm the number one motivation to speak in the world. I got a PhD in Michigan State. That's an automatic entry for them to go. And my son went, manager for a coach in Israel basketball. He got a final four ring in the eighth grade. My daughter went to Michigan State. Four year three, master. And I'm telling you, once, you're, once you get your finals out, now your kids just get to eat off your finals out. My kids work for me. I decide how much money they make, they don't. They don't got to get up and work. My boy worked for some Jewish guy in Chicago. My man, he said he messed up. He owed me a apology. I said, bro, you grown. You owe him an apology first. Then he apologized. I ain't giving you one. Then he ain't giving you 
you want. I, my son worked for me. He, he ain't, he ain't buying no other man. Why? Because I, in my finest hour, I took care of my, my finest hour. Then my babies get, get their finest hour. This ain't just about you. You mess up here, you about to mess it up for your home. You handle your business, they about to just be able to come straight to your feet. Why? Because you can't get it. My man said, three generations? Why? What? Legacy? Where they do that at? My father didn't even finish high school, which is why I dropped out. His finest hour, my man dropped out. His finest hour, he got my mama pregnant and some other chick pregnant too. I got a sister that ain't even not much younger than me. In his finest hour, he was playing. And he set me up for good. He dropped out, I dropped out. This is your finest hour, y'all. Let's go to the next one. I just want to show you when you have the minutes for half an hour. Huh? You're going to see this just exactly. Know what you want. Know why you want it. Make phenomenal decisions. Keep phenomenal company. Have a plan for that one. This is it. This is it. Let's go to the next one. I just want to help y'all out. I just want to help y'all out. I'm a high school dropout, y'all. I had one finest hour, that one finest hour hooked me up, sophomore year, my daughter called me. I got any, any girls in here, you, 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 your daddy's girl, any girls in here, girl. so I just got one daughter, my youngest, she's 25, she called me like, dad, what's up, that girl, she's like, yeah, the heart coming up, and she gets dead. She's like, okay, what's up, can you hit me, take me? I'm like, dad, I'm like, I'm proud of that girl. You know what I'm saying, I'm like, what? She's like, can you give me tickets? I'm like, yeah. When you make good, you know what I'm talking about, collaborate? When you make good decisions, guess what? You start hanging with people that make good decisions. I put out one video, 100 million hits. LeBron posted it, it was on Sports Center. LeBron said they used, coach said he used that video to help them win their first championship ever. So now all of a sudden, you got celebrities watching my stuff. One, I had one finest hour. I had one video. And can I be real with y'all, man? God, man, God knew my heart, y'all. We did one video, over 100 million hits. Yes, sir, we tried to do that when we did that video. Let's take a guess. We figured out that video, we tried to do what? We tried to make another one. Have we ever made another one that was as powerful as the Google story? Never. You don't think I tried? Mm -hmm. I never had no video that hit 100 million since that one. We barely did 10 video. But that one video changed my life forever. One game, one basketball, one football game, one class, and you don't know which one it's going to be. I didn't know we, I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't record that. Some dude recorded it for a sneaky, and we found out the recorder was like, yo, give us that. And then we just put it up on YouTube. I'm going to be real. We didn't put it on YouTube for people to see. We put it on YouTube to store. I'm old school. It was 8-track. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we just put it on 8-track. You know what I'm saying? Then at the A track, we had the cassette player for it. We, had, we can't put it on that and spread it out. Then it's the CD for it, the DVD. That's hard. So we just put it up on YouTube to store. So when kids wanted to watch it, they could. We won't go in there with 100 million hits. And can I be real, real? The one I put out only got about 8 million hits. The one my boy Giovanni put out with no shirt on, football, running up the beach. That's the one that hit the 50 mil. Barely easy to see. Help with the speech. <laughs> I just tried to say I had one fine hour for man too. So my daughter called me. I was like, "Yo, hey girl, I got you." Surprised her, took her backstage. My boy Q D Z, uh, a couple other people I know from Philly, and we got her backstage passes. I left. I didn't stay. She took a pic, and I'm talking about we we been. You feel what I'm saying? I've been a different dad since that day. <laughs> I did, I, my whole I, my brown points went all the way. Let's go to the next one. I just want to show y'all it's real. I just want to show y'all it's real. Your one finest hour. Your one finest. Steve Harvey was talking about my, he still do. Steve talks all my stuff all the time. So why I'm on the show? I'm on the show because I'm on the book. And Steve's like, come on the show real quick. I'm going to talk about your book and see if I get everybody in my circle. One, one hour, y'all. I had one thing I did right. I was where I was supposed to be one time, did exactly what I was supposed to do, how I was supposed to do it, one time. I'm not telling y'all you gotta do everything right. I'm just telling you if you make a couple good decisions. And can I be honest, once you start making good decisions, they just start, it, it just set. <laughs> you just, you ain't even trying, you just set. You get that one set and it's like, God, it, I'm not trying to tell you I gotta do everything right. I am telling you this though, don't make the kind of mistakes my mama made who was top 20 in her class, but when she got pregnant, this this sentence in Chicago, you can't, this is big, the school ain't about to let you graduate. She didn't get to graduate. She didn't get to walk across the stage. Now she got a paper, but she didn't get to walk across the stage. I'm telling you, don't make the type of mistake that you're going to have to leave. If you make it, make the kind that you can stay and you can fix it. 
Don't don't make those decisions that's gonna send you back to the street. You don't wanna go back home. I'm gonna be real, they don't want you back home. <laughs> that day she was like, Mama, I love you. I'm kind. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Not like 30 in the basement, love you. Not like messing up perk stuff, love you. So go ahead and do your thing, right? But but whatever you do, you're gonna get one finest hour. Take practice seriously, people. Take practice seriously. Take film watching series. I just left Auburn. Coach Freeze, my dude, when he was with Liberty, I was with him. Now he with Auburn. We just had a conversation like, it's real. It's real. You don't know who watching you, when they watching you. And they ain't always watching you when you're playing. Sometimes they're watching you when you're on the bench to see what type of team you play anymore. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. All right, so real quick, it's not for you. Show me your friends, I'll show you the future. Can I just say this to y'all? When I dropped out of high school my senior year, I wasn't hanging with AC. <laughs> None of my boys was on their way to college. It was all dope boys. They had all graduated a year or so before me. They was all hanging out. This, this aged me, but I got to tell the truth. They was all skipping school watching the box. It's like video back in the day. It was the first time video set came out, music video. They had the career watching music video. And the crazy thing about it was, the same videos came on at night. But we at the crib doing the day watching the jokes, so I ended up dropping out because they drop out. Now guess what? I'm a multimillionaire. You know why? Because I hang with multimillionaires. Everybody you're gonna see in the picture, my next book, me and CJ White, is called All My Friends Are Rich. Now this don't got nothing to do with they better than you. I'm not saying I'm like crap, I'm not saying they care just better than my grandma. I'm just saying I'm rich because all my friends are rich. And guess what? I just do the stuff they be doing. Bro, I just I had some friends on the day like, bro, you got all that money, take that money out the bank, because the bank ain't gone, and put your money in it, and you put your money in, you get five percent return in six months, I think five percent return, take it out, and you go put that in the SAP. I was like, oh, okay, and I did what they told me to do, I didn't know what they were talking about. And my man called me like, uh, you had what you want to do with your money. That's who I'm hanging out with. Does that make sense? Let's go to the next one. Oh, go back. I'm sorry, go back. Go back. I'm sorry. Let me run through it. Challenge others. Don't be afraid to go against the brain, right? To be the change you want to see. Number two, influence the inside out. You should influence the environment, not the other way around. I'm just being real. I, I really want to say this to you. You should be in the environment to ski that you don't even have to deal with the stuff that you have to deal with when you're at home. Y'all got to stop letting that happen, y'all. It's got to be a safe place. Does that make sense? It's just some stuff. I told my son, I love you, bro. If you smoking and drinking, I love you. You're like, dude, come in play. Don't come to my crib with that. Your grandfather was strung out on crack for 14 years. Don't bring that to my house. Your uncle died of cirrhosis of the liver. Brilliant man, but he had problems with alcohol. Don't bring that stuff in my house. You can drink, smoke, do whatever you want to do. Don't bring that in my house. Protect my house. My door, I don't know what you're doing. You might not be doing it wrong. I don't know. But whatever you're doing, if you're on the phone, talk to somebody, boy, something, don't bring that in my house. Stay in your car and do that. My house is safe. This is the only place that we can go that can't nobody just come here. This ain't the Emmett Till story. I'm not gonna sit here in line and tell you that, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna beat everybody up. If somebody knock on my door to get my kid, I promise you, somebody. Somebody going when I go. We're gonna protect our house. Some of, this is your house. Protect this house. Don't let stuff in. If there's certain things you want to do, wherever, I, I don't know, is Popeyes, is that, all, is that outside of school living? I don't know. I, I saw the Popeyes when I first came in. I said, I'm close. <laughs> I ain't never been here before, but when I saw the Popeyes, I said, oh, yeah, we right around. It's somewhere right around here. I don't know how close it is. That joke is close. <laughs> yes, indeed. Amen. So I don't know if Popeyes is like, you know, Tuskegee property, but if it ain't, that's where you go to do all your stuff. I'm not telling you don't do your stuff. I'm just telling you don't bring that stuff here. Because when you start bringing that stuff here, all of a sudden you get out of hand. Protect the ski gear. It just needs to, it just to be some stuff that just don't even happen here. Does that make sense? Sure. I'm just saying for real. Like, it's your fellas. This is some stuff y'all should protect. Period. It's just some stuff y'all shouldn't allow on campus. It don't have nothing to do with the administration. This is our campus. This is our home for the next four years. We just not allow in certain things. Does that make sense? I come up being tough. I'm just saying protect your stuff. My kids come to the crib like, bro, I know you might not. My son live in LA. You may not watch, you know what I'm saying, your own house up. But if you come here, make sure the toilet, everything, your mama got to use it after you cook. Clean up. Nobody should even know you cook. Not, don't, don't bring that to my house. You can live however you want to live in your house. But when you come to my house, you know your mom, she's good, but she got multiple strokes. We're gonna pay. The Lord is blessed if you don't have her stressed out because you got clothes everywhere. Bro, protect our house or don't come in it. 
If it's too much to ask me to clean up your yourself, just don't come to the crib. Just come visit and then go back home. But if you're going to live here, protect this house. This is y'all. This belongs to you. You should let no outside or inside mess this up. Does that make sense? Good. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. So, so I don't know. Anybody in the room, anybody know who that dude is? Um, sit that chill. I just want y'all to see, bro, who I'm aiming. Like, I'm not playing. I start making good decisions. I just kept making good decisions. Who's my man? Somebody raise their hand for me, real quick. Who is that, sir? Warren, Warren Butler. Butler. Can you tell me how much he's worth? Just take, open your 80, phone up and tell 80, me how much. Just open 80, your phone up. The 80 billion? Let's see how much he's worth. 100 billion. 100 what? Billion. I said 100 million? Billion. Also, I said billions. Yeah, now I'm playing with your billions, y'all now. High school dropout. High school dropout. Made one good decision. Got my GED and I went to an HBCU. I'm telling you where you sit is where I started. And most of y'all started better than me because I couldn't read or write. I was so dumb when I got to college, they did a placement test. I didn't even know what they were doing. I was like, what are we doing here? Why are we taking a test? We haven't even started school yet. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I go and take a test. I said, for what? We haven't even started class yet. It was like, well, you didn't graduate from high school, so you don't have an SAT or ACT on five. So I was like, all right, bet. Went and took it. Bro, I was so, I was so dumb. I, College, my mom didn't go to college. My father ain't got a TV right now. He's 70 something. Bro, I got my schedule going to class. I'm a geek. My homeboy, like, yo, what you got? I'm like, bro, English, bro. He said, bro, you got English? I said, what time? Eight. He said, I got eight. I ain't seen you this morning. I was like, bro, you know my schedule? What you got? He said, I got English right here. English 101. What you got? I was like, English? Oh, zero, zero. Oh. <laughs> oh. My bad. <laughs> we all fooled. My company switched. <laughs> My bad. He was like, oh yeah, you wouldn't get credit for that one. That's like some high school stuff. I'm talking about I looked at all my stuff. Oh, math, everything. Zero, zero, one. They was like, bro, you just here on fun. Your freshman year, like, you ain't get credit for none of this stuff. You might want to take some electives. Just being real. I ain't making the right decisions. I'm, I'm, so some of y'all, you laughing at me, but you smarter than me and you ain't even taking care of your, you're not even having your business. You know how to read and you're not. Mm. You know how to write when you're not. I'm just being real. You know you come from a family, y'all know how y'all, you can comprehend, but you didn't got to school and all of a sudden school ain't that dancing y'all was doing. I love it. I, 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 every bit of it. Memorization, the, the, y'all was precise, the swag you put with it, do that in class for right. I wanted it both. I wanted it social, I wanted mental, I wanted academic, I wanted money. Like you should be that dope in everything you touch. Does that make sense? Good. So, what, how much you say it was worth? 100 billion? 119 billion. You don't want to mess up. 19 billion is a lot. <laughs> so, first of all, I told y'all, like, I'm going to be me flat out. That's what HBC took. I'm in the room right with this on. I ain't going to lie. I did wear a new hat because he wore it I did. And I wore a new shirt. I never wore that shirt before. I had some new 501. You can't see it, but I. I had some J's in the box that I never wore that Michael Jordan blessed me with. I had never worn. So I did go all new with my man. But I was the only one in the room that wasn't a millionaire. God told me I'll put you in there with millionaires so you could become a millionaire. You are here not to stay how you were when you got here. That's not the goal. The goal ain't for you to prove what neighborhood you're from, and what block you come from, how cool you are. The block, the, the, the goal is four years from now, I shouldn't recognize. I'm just gonna be real. I went to Old Boy. Everybody used to call me Detroit. That's how dumb I was. They didn't call me by my name. They like Detroit. Because my whole movie was with Detroit. Chicago. That's what they called me. I was geek. Chicago. Detroit. <laughs> if my teacher saw me now, nobody thought I would get a PhD. If you knew me, I told people all the time, you better have taken a picture of me when I was 22. Because it ain't nothing about that 20 year old, 62 year old, that even resembles the same person. Right. You wouldn't even recognize the way I talk, the way I communicate. You wouldn't even recognize. So I'm in the room with one Buffett and one Buffett. Let me tell you what my man said. Unbelievable. We buy shoes, cars, stuff. One Buffett was like, let me tell you, I've never seen white males respond to another white male the way I saw one Buffett walk You're talking about dudes that's worth 19 million, 20 million. When my man walked in and was what, worth 119, it was like, whoa. You know, my man said he was talking to him he was like, yeah, I just supply Coca-Cola. <laughs> you know, we, buy, we buy shoes, we buy shoes, we buy stuff. 
My man just said he didn't want to go like it was nothing. And he said it like it was like going to the store and buying a new pair of shoes. He just got out just got cold. He wasn't even bragging or nothing. Well, he said, well, they're going to have Come on, y'all better. Cut bars. Come on. Bars. So do me another favor, bro, if you don't mind. He leave. Wait, all right. Do me another favor. Tell me how many Coca Colas they sell today. I want to show y'all. Just get in the room. Why you need to be in the right room? I need to be in the right room. This is what I'm listening to. He bought Coca-Cola. How much? Did, how many Cokes do they sell a day? It's gonna blow your mind. You saw how he looked at it. He looked at it like whoa, like he like whoa. Is that real enough? Two point two billion sold a day. Let me tell you what he said. He said I just bought it and I just raised it a penny. I said a penny. He said, yeah, I raised a penny. So the people that buy it, we need to know that way. But that's two point, that's two point two million dollars for the penny boy times 365, which comes out to be a couple of billion a year. He bought something that he changed to a penny and now he's making billions off of it. That's why you got when they when you put uh, the president told you over there, and then we told you over here again. Amazon is here, it's about exposure. It's about being around and seeing stuff you've never seen before. So you could be something you've never been before. And when I walk out of that room, I'm different. The guy, uh, my homie, really, is Tony Knuckles. He was my mentor. And he said, I'm going to teach you the language that you need because you don't got it right. I'm from Chicago, from Detroit. You're not a bad person, but you don't know corporate. You don't know white language. I'm going to teach it to you. Got me. There's always going to be somebody that's going to be a, they're going to build a bridge for you. And you got to love that person, respect that person. Let's do it. He got me in the room, and guess what? I'm from the city, y'all, right next to one but I'm from the city. I use my city. And when we finished, everybody wanted to be next to him. I was like, nah, they ain't from the hood. They don't know how to do it. Boom. Right? And I knew it was going to be important when I showed the pics, because we like to show pics. Like, it's a part of the culture. I wanted to show a pic with me right next to my man in my gear. Because they brought me to the room for a They brought me to the room. Y'all, I'm talking about I'm straight. Like, I'm straight from the city. I'm like straight out of circle. What do I mean by that? So if you live in the black neighborhood in the summertime, in the black neighborhood in the summertime, you see a suburban come. It's doing like 100 miles per hour. It just come on your block, slow down. Windows start coming down. What do we do? Right. <laughs> That's just something you live in the hood. That ain't like hood 304. You, you just learned that. Hood 101. You just learned that. Come on. But you know what? I brought your white neighborhoods and I said, it's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. So I, I knew that they had some advantages on me, but one thing they have is the hood. So I knew the duck the reason. I went in there and took a picture of everybody came there before they got there and figured out how much they was running. And figured out who they were. And then me and my team came together, my lawyer, and we asked the question, why did they invite me in the room if I'm not really there? And then it dawned on me. They're all bringing industry to the cities, but they don't relate to the people in the city. Mm. So the people in the city don't trust them. So it's going to be hard to hire somebody that don't trust you, so they know they trust ET. I said, you have to pay for that trust. I'm going to get my people to come work for you. Are y'all seeing what I'm going with this? This is what I learned here. You ain't here just to have fun. You ain't here to be cool. Now, I want you to date. I want you to get married. We all, people, some of us do that. Yeah, I got married, HBCU, freshman year after my freshman year. We got married two days ago. We celebrated 33 years. It's real. You can get married again. But that ain't the goal of you. That ain't the goal to get married and be broke. All right, let's go to the next one. I'm sorry. Let's go to the next one. We ain't got a lot of time. All right, so, so, so what happened was I started doing my videos. So when I started doing my videos, I work for the NFL. So I do something for the Super Bowl. So I'm in Houston a few years ago for the Super Bowl, and I see a bunch of black dudes walking toward me. I was like, you know, I'm from the city. I'm there. I'm like, what's the ball, man? I was like, okay. And I look closer, and I see Meek. I'm like, what's up, Meek? I'm like, what's up, E.T.? So we started talking. He was like, bro, you don't know me, but when I was in prison, I, I, I used to listen to this stuff. So we just chopped it up. You know, respect. I left. Two months later, I got a call. He lost it. He wants to start the album off with your stuff. You got to eat the dream. You got to speak the dream. You gotta be possessed with the dream, the dream. 
Every time they play the ching 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 ching. Every time they play like the ching. And I'm just trying to tell you, I went to the same, I went to HBC just like you did. I just didn't just come and stay the same. I learned while I was here. I took advantage of it. And it took me 12 years to get a point of degree. I was still my team. Every time Dion, Dion, my book, Dion posted my book up to his fans, he got whenever his team he used my stuff. So I just want to show you that these are friendships, but these friendships are your money. Does that make sense? That's what y'all, y'all don't know who in here. I, I'm not saying no name, but y'all, there's some people y'all look at right now, like they whack, that you looking at them when they dance, so you look at them when they dance, and they like, oh, they scrub, they whack. Yeah, you on top right now, little homie. While we ain't making no bread, you on top. You Mr. Popular. Wait till we get out there. That's why I used to tell them that the HBC, you jokes. You a joke. So what you got a 3.0? You think you're better than me. Like, let's see what happens when we get out of the class and we get the real world. Let's see who gonna shine. Care nothing about your little battle with Jordan. <laughs> Care about your magnum cum laude, summa cum laude. Care nothing about that. We gotta go out here. We only gonna be in here for four. And you gonna look good for the four. But then we gotta go out in the real world. We gonna see who gonna shine when we get out there. When it's real grind. When it's real work. Right. I'm just being real. It's gonna take some grind. And you get if you, if you practice the grind here. It's going to make it real easy when you go out there. But some of y'all, you're going to get hit when you get out there because you're playing in here. Mm. And here's the one thing about the HBCU if you're not careful. Your teachers love you so much that they're going to rock with you even when they shouldn't be rocking with you. Because mm. they love you. And you're going to let that be to your demise. Instead of taking that support and using it to go to the next level, you're going to take it to try to hustle. My HBCU was crazy because it was Christian, so we got to pray with the professor. We really didn't know to pray for him at that point. You know, Jesus wouldn't have that. I don't know if it's you or me, I'm not sure. But let us pray about it. <laughs> we in church together, I'm like, don't get pray for my grave. <laughs> the Lord don't want me to fail. You fail. About to fail, pray, pray. You change your teaching strategy. We need to pray. They just some teachers, I'm gonna be real, they were so Christian, they just let you, they gave you a D plus, C minus, but really you got an F. Mm -hmm. And then you was geek, but then you went out there, mm -hmm. and they don't give praise that you don't earn out there. That's right. They don't even, they don't give you nothing out there you don't earn. And if some stuff you earn, depending on who you are, where they are, they ain't gonna give you what you mm. You can't tell me all the stuff over to Washington did, that this school shouldn't be built, that the trademarks that should they come on, they took credit for that stuff. They didn't give me all this credit. All right, let's roll. I'm sorry. Let's roll. I'm sorry. Let's go. All right, let's go. I'm sorry. So let's get planning and organized. Planning takes time and dedication. All right, treat it like a long-term long investment. All right, here's what I want you to do, for real. Your 18-year-old self is not about your 18-year-old self. Your 18-year-old self is about your 20-year-old self. I want you to do it in teens. And you will only be grateful at 28 if your 18-year-old self did what it was supposed to do. It's going to bless your 28-year-old self. But if you wake up at 28 years old, you can do what you both were 18, 19, 20. When you wake up at 28, you're not going to, it's not, and you just magically going to happen. So I need you to understand, the decisions you make at 18, it's going to affect 28. Because what you do at 28 is going to affect 38. What you do at 38 is going to, it's going to affect 40. Does that make sense? So I want you to pay attention. All right. So understand the value system like yours, right? It's the triangle offense, right? The, the interstate highway system. Right? Watch this. You got to understand that. For those of you, how many of y'all just being real? You grew up going to church. You grew up going to church. That's a value system. How many of y'all leave, come here, and you ain't really doing church like you did? Just be real when you was at the creek. You feel me? That's your value system. Now you're playing without your value system. That's like Michael Jordan playing without the triangle. You thought Mike was dope, and he wasn't. The triangle was dope. All right, let me just ask you real quick. How many championships did Michael Jordan win before he had a champion, before he had a triangle offense? No. How sweet was he though when he had a triangle? Sweet. Sweet, yeah. But he never won any what? Championships. When he got Bill Jackson, he got the system, what did he do? Went off. Listen to me very closely. Christianity is your value system, it's your triangle. And then you come here and you forget about it. Mm. I'm not telling you to be a Christian. I ain't on that. I didn't grow up in church. You were praying in my crib. I'm not telling you to do that. Now, I am a Christian now. I'm not telling you to do that. I never made my kids be Christian. I'm not telling you that. But I'm telling you there's a value system that works. It's something we've been doing for a long time. Slavery, we were doing it. When we were enslaved, that's what we were doing. Now y'all have just walked away from a whole value system. Mm. You didn't walk away from the triangle. How are you going to be successful without a system? Mm. 
So whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. If it's working, you've got to do it. Let's go. All right, I'm sorry. We're going to get out of here. Learn to create the system. Like, I just enjoy the benefits of it. So what I had to do was create my own system. Like, I want to be a motivational speaker, but not like that. I used to hate when motivational speakers come to school. I'm like, ah, oh, you're about to be this all get out. So I was like, yo, I got to figure out a way to do it where I can still keep it relevant and still, and today I make $200,000 an hour doing what I do if I do corporate work. I, I have to work. Where I can get a check and still feel myself. Does that make sense? Good. Let's go to the last one. All right? Let's go to the last one. We go. Let's get these slides. Let's get late. All right? So what happens is when you find your own system and you start doing what you do when you start winning, when you start falling. I always want y'all to see, he was young, he, 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 he is older than that right now, he probably was like maybe 19, 20, he's 28 right now. But you see what happened? I go to Alabama, I introduce my son, to take my man everywhere. So, so, so now I'm in the NFL, why? Because Jalen Hurts ain't from Alabama. So now Jalen calls and says, hey, e, can you come to the Eagle? I just want you to see, when you start, when you figure it out, and you figure out a system and start working for you, and you just keep hitting that tree at the same spot, and you get everybody out your way, I'm trying to impress people, and you just figure out what your system is. Like, how many of y'all used to pray before you came to college and you don't pray as much? Just be real, you don't pray as much. Good. How many, how many of y'all was praying working for you when you was praying with your hand? Mm -hmm. I'm saying working. How many of y'all paid tithes before and it was working? How many of y'all got here and stopped paying tithes and now it ain't working? You're like, why is my mother? You quit the system. You're not all masked up after me. I just nothing. I ain't got no luck. It don't got nothing to do with luck. You was paying your tithe. Your grandma made you. <laughs> and you was benefiting from it. And then you get here and you walk away from the very thing that you, because mm. your boy ain't tired. Well, your homegirl don't go to church. And now you feel some type of way about doing what you always used to do and it always worked. I've been praying at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care what no little crazy joke. Somebody said, uh, I, I, I read a quote that said, it's all right that I'm a villain in your story because you're a clown in mine. Ooh. You're a full clown. Mm. I sit here worried about what you think about me. Mm. Prayer was working when I was homeless. Why would I stop because of you? Mm. Time pain been working for me. Why would I stop because you think I'm crazy because I'm a Christian? It's working for me. Like I stop doing that. Yeah, I'm a villain in your head. You think I'm 20 years? Okay. Corporate baby, 200 grand. I don't care what. I don't care how. Oh, I can't be. It don't matter what you think. I'm yeah, I'm cutting checks to print money. I just wrote a New York Times bestseller. We sold 50,000 copies of the book in one week. It don't matter what people think. It only matters that I can help my kids pay bills. Y'all gotta get off of that social media. These likes. How much money are you making from the likes? Nothing. What is it doing for your life? How should we add value? Time is adding value. Going to church is adding value. Yeah. Some joke will give you a thumbs up. It ain't adding no value. Sure. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I just want y'all to go. <laughs> and we crossing all over, too. You cross all over. Once you become successful, you cross all over. You just, you just go everywhere. It just don't stop. Sure. So a lot of y'all, you want some. Nothing, nothing, my, my, nothing ever works for me. Nothing is working for you. So get off that path and get on a good path, and it's just going to work for you. There's no purgatory. You either killing it or you're not. And you have the ability to kill it. You're in one of the best schools in the world. Does that mean how many of y'all agree? Y'all are one of the best universities in the world. Make sure y'all don't know it. Oh, see you. They go to various schools. You got people coming from other parts of the world to come study here. Alright, let's go. I just want y'all, you know, you're this generation. You gotta show work. Alright, here's the last one. Develop collaborative skills. Alright? Just start working with people. Let's go to the next one. It's late. Start working with people. I work with different countries this year. You know, when it works, it's just work. Prayer works. Why do, why do I stop? This style of speaking work. I was in the boy's face. I was like, bro, I'm engaged. I'm trying to win a challenge. What? <laughs> How you going to check this shit when I'm engaged? You're going to win. 56. All right, bet. They want people to win a division. Won everything. I'm just saying, you got one life, you're big. Stop being a clown. Stop worrying about what people think about you. Stop going to class and not doing the best you can do. If the best you can do is a C, you know, I'm going to take that all day. But if you got an A in you and you give these people a C, come on. Come on. If you know how to write, come on. If you want some chat GPT, come on. You don't really know how to write, don't let it write for you. Now, if you know how to write, you just want to use it as a strength. It's your whole paper. <laughs> you didn't push the button and did the whole don't do that. That's fake. But then when you get out of here, 
And then they're going to test you and you ain't going to... They're going to test y'all out there, y'all. They're not going to cut y'all no slack, I'm just trying to tell you. They're not going to cut y'all no slack out there. Some of them don't even want you to succeed. They don't even want you to take that spot. That's what they own now. They done took home the form of action. Talk about, did y'all read Florida? Florida got a new thing they're teaching in the schools that uh, we've benefited from slavery. What? Right. I'm trying to figure out how. Crazy. <laughs> Help me see that. I can see that. How do, I, how do my ancestors benefit from right. getting whipped? How did you benefit from that? Right. Being raped, being benefited from not being educated. How do we benefit? There are people out there that don't want you to take their spot. And you playing. Let's, let's go to the next one. So my man CP3 actually did a shoe, a Jordan brand shoe with my my coach on I'm just saying, when you start doing what's right, y'all, you just go into every field. You get it, you're talented. Y'all can do it, but you have to stop playing. Do me a favor, play as a reward. Don't play as a major. No major is playing. You got a whole major of playing. There ain't no real major. You're out here playing. It's okay to party. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to be in relationships with fun. It's okay, but you didn't come to school to do that. That's secondary. Nothing matters if you don't walk out of this joker with a degree. That's the only goal. Is that make, am I making sense? I just, to make some noise, am I making sense? Y'all just staring at me. That's right, that's right. Look at my face. <laughs> Church or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here go the last one. Can I say this? Everything I'm saying is for you. Let's go through. I think this is, yeah. I'm just telling y'all, it just is magic. When you do what God tells you to do, you work hard. True. Just people all the time. Why you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning so I can live this kind of life? For everything I touch can turn to gold. He said it. Wherever you place your feet, I give it to you. Mm -hmm. I think that was the last one. Is that the last one? I think that's the last one. The journey of a thousand miles starts with one. One step. And you took the first one. But it's easy. You took the first one. You're here, y'all. This is where many greats have gone. Many greats have gone here all over the world. Every time I connect with somebody, they just went to they just went to ski. I'm just being real. Everywhere I go, was that the last one? I just want to make sure. Was that the last one? Oh no, there's another one. That okay? It always seems impossible until it's what? Look, that we got more. Okay. The only person. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. The only person you're destined to become is the person you decide to be. Are you decide to be a clown or you decide to be a scholar? Let's go. That's the last one. Y'all got come on. That's it. All right, so here's here's the uh, code. I came here to hire five people. Mm. I came here to hire five people. Mm. When they asked me to come here, you knew it wasn't about economics. I knew it was about this university has blessed black people, even if we didn't go here. Mm. It was a model of what black schools should look like. What, what, what year was y'all school founded? 1881. We were 1896. So that tells you we can't win. After. How many years is that? 1896, 18, hey, how many years is that? So we were watching in those years. <laughs> we were watching for the blueprints. So Skeeky gave us the blueprint. Then we started over. Y'all gave us the blueprint. 1881, 1896. Y'all gave us the blueprint. Some of us took advantage of it. Even mm -hmm. though we didn't go to Tuskegee, we still took the spirit of Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. And we used it where we were. And we talked about y'all. We dreamed about y'all. And we did, we did some of our papers on y'all. Mm -hmm. We talked about Morehouse. We talked about how we talked about y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. were the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. I just believe in 2023 it had changed. I still believe some of the best of the best is right here in this room. Right. And I want to put you to work. Five of you, I want to put you to work. I'm going to put you to work and help you change the world. Look, I love you guys. That's my time. All right, well, they're clearing out of here. Um, I tried to catch him. <laughs> I tried to catch him. He shot out of here. Um, but uh, I saw he was with Mr. Armstead, so I, I called Mr. Armstead, and uh, I spoke to him on the phone, spoke to uh, E.T. on the phone real quick, told him I was um, Booker T. Washington's great, great, great nephew, and on behalf of the family, I want to thank him for carrying on the legacy of Booker T. It's not just Martin and Malcolm, but he's carrying on Booker T's work too. And he said he, and uh, 
E.T. said he appreciated that. Um, all right, so yeah, like I said, um, got a chance to speak to E.T. Uh, on the phone real quick. Because just because I wanted him to just kind of know I'm getting ready to sign up in his uh, Speakers Academy and to be on the lookout um, for me as motivational spoken word. I mean, maybe eventually one day we'll be able to work together. Um, but because I'm on my way to being the number one motivational spoken word artist um, in the world, ain't no competition. <laughs> Look, I done, I done checked the internet, scoured it left and right, ain't no competition. I'm killing all of them. Um, so, and then on behalf of Booker T. Washington family, I was trying to just uh, let him know that he's not just Martin and Malcolm, like he's really carrying on the legacy of Malcolm, I mean, I mean, Booker T, Frederick Douglass, uh, WB, you know, like, he's really carrying on those legacies as well. So tell him, I want to encourage him to go back a little farther when he thinks about um, the, the, all the torches that he's carrying.